So here we have my all-time favourite car, the Ferrari F40. Well, here it is, my favourite car of all time, the one I always wanted. <laughs> Haven't actually owned one, would love to, but I've got lots of stories on the F40. Now, I had a call from Harrison. He said, Richard, get down here. I've got an F40, and there's not many times you can see them. They are quite a rare car. I rushed down here and thought, right, I'm just going to do the video myself. I want to just get on. I want to see this car. So let's take you around it. Let's have a chat about F40s in general. Now, 1,315 produced, which is quite a lot for these sort of super series cars. Now, the F50, I think they made 399. I think there was 399 Enzos. Um, but this was the one they made the most of. And the key reason was there was such demand. Now, originally, they were only going to make 400 cars at $400,000, but the demand was so strong, they built another 915. And prices were wild at the time. So $400,000, but they were going to $1.6 million. Huge increase, huge increase. And that was in 1990, and these come out in about 88. Nigel Mansell cars went for a bit more. He had um, one F40, and I think that sold for a million dollars after he had it, so $600,000 more. Now, I have had the opportunity to buy two F40s, um, and I've never bought one, but the first opportunity was uh, a car that I looked at. It was a one-owner car, and it's 360,000 pounds in 2013. And probably I should have bought it. But at the time, I had a chat with a friend of mine. He was in the car business. As he said, Richard, you're crazy to buy that car. It's a lot of money. I had a feeling they were going to go up. Um, I went and test drove the car. Car broke down. We had to bump it, push it up the road. I drove it. And to tell the truth, it felt very quite awkward because the steering wheel was quite a long way off. I needed more time with the car. Now, the following week, I drove a Lancia Group A rally car, which I own today, um, and I thought it was better than this to drive. That was my honest opinion, and I decided not to get the F40, um, and I bought the Lancia, and the Lancia was £40,000. Now, I know today, obviously, these have gone up a lot, but going on from there, I had another opportunity to buy one, and it was £800,000 and about 7,000 miles. And again, I thought I had the opportunity to buy one at 360. Now they're 800. Everyone said that these would probably stall a bit in value because there were so many produced. But obviously now, these cars, it's very unlikely you'll get one for under £2 million. So you can see they've had a huge rise. One did sell, I think, for $5 million. Very low mileage car. I think it was under 500 miles. So they've gone on a massive run now. And everyone's probably the thinking the same as me that they've gone and you can't get one. And But I don't know. I know they seem a lot. And that made me think about my P1. Now, I rushed over, saw it yesterday, took a few films of this one. And I thought, would I have this or the P1? Now, all of these were red. Apart from a few, Sultan of Brunei had, I think, in a different color. Virtually all were left-hand drive. Again, the Sultan had, I think, a couple of right-hand drive ones. So mainly it is just this color, and you're looking at 1,315. Now, the P1, 375 made, so a lot rarer. And then I've got the only carbon purple P1 in the world. So it's, I think if I had a regular P1, I'd probably still go F40, but the P1 I've got, I think I would stick with that. And... And I did have all sort of thoughts running through my mind coming down here. Should I have had the F40? Should I have had the P1? But I think I made the right decision. But this is absolutely a dream car for me. Um, so going back to that, obviously, I've had two opportunities. And obviously, at 360 and then at 800. Um, and probably the 800 cars, probably 3 million now. But... Um, I think it's absolutely stunning design. I know I'm going to run through the interior with you. We're going to run through the engine, run through the back of the car. I love the pop-up headlamps. I love everything on this car. And it just seems a bit weird because when you have model cars and you're younger and you put them on your desk or at home and everyone used to send me birthday cards with an F40 on, 
then you see it for real, it, it, it sort of, I wouldn't say it takes your breath away, but it makes you feel like, wow, what a car. And, and here today, it just feels like the model car's just been blown up for me and is now in front of me. And I just love everything about this car and the design. I think that I love the wheels, the Speedline wheel with the, the bolts around the side. I love that design. I love the air takes on the inside. All this in here reminds me of McLaren these days. The scoops going through, the Perspex screen, the free exhaust, the rear spoiler. You're obviously getting me that I like this car a lot. Would I drive it much? Not so sure. Uh, when I was looking at the first car, it had so many fire extinguishers, it put me off. And they do have a habit of catching fire. Um, so that wasn't, you know, the best introduction to F40. And even in here, I assume there's one or two in there. They used to sort of rig them up for the engine as well. Um, I probably prefer to drive the P1, if I'm honest, looking at this today. Um, but I feel this is art, motoring art. I think you take it for a drive maybe once or twice a year. And then you just sit it in your garage and you just look at it and go, wow, I've got an F40. And I think if you've got an F40, I don't know why you'd sell one unless you absolutely needed the money. I can't see where you go. Um, and that was one thing for me. If I did get one, then where do I go? I've, I just feel it's, it's the greatest car ever. Um, let's move around the back of the car now and we'll have a look at the engine. Then we do stuff on, on the rear spoiler and that you know, superb design, and then we'll go through the interior as well. So let's move on to that. So let's have a look at the engine. 2.9 litre twin turbo. I know most of the facts on this because it's my favourite car. 478 horsepower, twin turbo, loads of torque, loads of torque, but quite high up. So I think it was like three and a half, four thousand revs is when the turbo really come in. And it was... At that time, first car to reach 200 mile an hour. Um, and then I think the 959 was just slightly under 200. I think this went to 201. It was about, I think, 3.8 to 60, 8.3 to 100, which nowadays isn't that quick. I had a look at some of the lap times, actually, in Bedford Autodrome. This was about 125, which nowadays would probably be the same as a Golf R. Golf R may be slightly quicker, actually. So that shows how much performance has moved on in the 30 years, or 34 years now. Tubey exhaust, really like that. I love the three tailpipes. I know um, there's not many cars with three tailpipes. I saw a BMW performance one, and it had four, and it looked all wrong. But on this car, it looks fantastic. I love the back of the car as well. The tyres are huge. I think that's like my Mercia Largo. They look like an 18 inch. I think they're probably 335 profile. Um, the other thing with these cars, very difficult to get tires. Uh, I think people are actually keeping back Pirelli tires now for this car so they can have them in the future. And obviously people don't do that many miles with them. The engine is right forward, just behind the seats actually. Loads of room here. It's quite interesting. Fans here. Lots of space at this end, but this end, very, very crammed in um, with those two turbos. But it does look stunning. This is the sort of thing you could obviously just open this up in the garage, although this is very heavy. You think it's lightweight carbon, but actually it's very heavy. Um, and you do need two or three people, really, one each end, and then one to put this bar strut that goes up in here. I love the, the glass here. What is it? It's probably probably plastic actually, um, or Perspex through there. It looks fantastic. So what I do now, let's put this back down. Right, so let's jump in this Ferrari F40. Very light door. Does feel nice. It's interesting the the gear lever actually. It's almost like a I don't know a, a snookable little fans here. Look at these fan on hot cold. So it's obviously very stripped out. I'm just trying to take it all in actually. Um, interesting that it's leather here. I don't know if that's standard or it's been put in. Seats feel. Very similar to the, the Vantage seats, you know, the Cobra ones I've put in. Slightly offset pedals. 
I'll say slightly, quite a way offset actually. So a bit like how the Murcielago and Lamborghinis are. Yeah, it is weird sitting in here because when it's your dream car, it, uh, I don't know, it makes you always feel a little bit funny when you, you have the little car, the little model car, you really want it and then you actually sit in it. One thing in here though, I feel like there's quite a lot of room. Like I feel miles away from the door, which is a bit like McLaren's. Obviously, it's pushing you more into the middle of the car. I'll oh, get the seat where I want it. Yeah, a bit closer. So yeah, it doesn't feel, it's just a little bit offset. Very much like uh, Murcielago, actually. The brake pedal <laughs> feels very much like the Sim. Very hard to push in a good way. Clutch feels fine. I said it feels it's quite heavy, but that wouldn't overly worry me. I love seeing this carbon weave here. Yeah, dog leg first. Mm. Yeah, it's just weird sitting in a car that, uh, you know, you feels like the, the greatest car ever for me. It feels really nice, actually. Big thank you to VVS for letting me come over today as well, because this is it pretty mega so what we do we'll head round have a look around the back of the car go through the overall design and then we get a conclusion on on owning or potentially owning an F40 one day hopefully so let's look at the rear of this car because I think it's got the best rear of any car now I love this engraved F40 here I love this angle in here I love the wheels. I love these sort of slats here. I love the slats here. I love this. You're getting the gist. I quite like this car. Perspex rear screen. I love that. I love the free exhaust. I love the rear lights. I just think it's one of the best cars ever. Huge thank you to VVS for letting me come over today. I've really, really enjoyed it. And this is my dream car. And one day, hopefully, you never know, I might get one. So please like and subscribe to our channel. Love to hear more comments on this car and love for you to like and subscribe to it as well. And I'll see you all again soon.